All right, good evening. This is Luke Revan, Assistant Township Manager here at East Brandywine Township. I'm addressing you in my capacity as the online moderator for this regular session of the Board of Supervisors. Due to the coronavirus pandemic and to protect the health and safety of township officials and our residents, the board is conducting this meeting by webinar. This meeting is being recorded and will be rebroadcast on the township YouTube channel. Public notice of this meeting was posted on the township website on July 8th, consistent with Act 15 of 2020. The agenda for this meeting was also posted on the website at ebrandywine.org forward slash agenda center and is also visible on your screen. Chairman Kyle Scribner, Vice Chairman Jason Winters, candidates for the vacancy on the Board of Supervisors and members of staff, including myself, are present in the township building for the meeting. Joining us remotely is township solicitor Kristen Camp, all other parties joining us can hear me, but your own phones and computer microphones are muted, so we cannot hear you. To facilitate an organized meeting, we're using the following procedure. As with in-person meetings, I ask that all participants wait to be recognized by the Chairman Scribner before speaking, and that all comments be directed to the board chairman. To be recognized, you must first ask me, in my capacity as the online moderator, to unmute your audio connection. You may request this at any time via the chat feature located on the left side of your screen. Each person recognized by the chairman should state their name and their address before posing their question. Uh, uh, chairman Scribner, I, I turn the meeting over to you. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to the East Brandywine Township Board of Supervisors regular session remote meeting for Thursday, July 16th. 2020, 6.30 p.m. Just a reminder tonight, a recording device will be used during this meeting as stated earlier. Opening of the meeting, instructions for the public participation Luke just gave, and we'll open up now for public comment for non-agenda items. Just a reminder that rules of conduct of public meetings established by resolution 2001-08, the time allotted to each individual making a comment shall be three minutes unless otherwise set by the presiding officer. Additional public comment may be granted at the discretion of the presiding officer at the conclusion of the meeting. So I will open it up for public comment on non-agenda items. And we'll start with the room first, just since I can see all hands, if there's any in the room. Seeing none, we'll turn it over. I'm seeing some pop up on the screen right now. So we'll turn it over to... Um, to yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unmute the phone of Chris Waters. Please stand by. We're still standing by for a connection. Uh, Chris, we can't hear you, but I'm going to uh, pose an alternative. If you happen to be near a phone, um, there is a 1-800 uh, number you can call to, to get access. The 1 800 number is 1 800 366 4068. Oh, I think that's a moot point. Hi, Chris. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? 
<clears throat> yes, we can. You're 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 live. Okay, great. Sorry about that. I thought I had it connected correctly. Okay. Good evening, uh, everyone. Um, thank you for letting me provide my comments. My name is Chris Waters. Um, I'm a property owner in East Brandywine Township. I currently reside in Oxford, Pennsylvania. Um, I was informed uh, through your, your uh, agenda and, and website that um, there's some changes in the supervisors and I was informed that Ken Ader is resigning his supervisor position, which leaves only the two supervisors in place. It's my understanding that Mr. Scribner and Mr. Winters do not always see eye to eye and probably not likely they're going to agree on the selection of a third supervisor, meaning the vacancy committee may be called upon to make the final decision regarding the supervisor's position. Under normal, under normal circumstances, that process may be effective, but in this case, the vacancy committee has two supervisors and Mr. Sherbeck as its third member. If the two supervisors disagree, Mr. Sherbeck will break the tie because he is one of the applicants for the seat on the board. He is in a conflict of interest in casting the final vote for the appointment. Therefore, Mr. Sherbeck will decide if he becomes the next supervisor over other qualified candidates. Now, I've been in management for over 40 years and in corporate America, and I can't imagine any business or government office that allows a candidate to select themselves for a job opening or an official position, and in this case, one as important and as influential as a township supervisor. It is a conflict of interest of the worst kind where there are no checks and balances. Given the existing process cannot work fairly, under these circumstances, my suggestion to remedy this conflict of interest is as follows. Mr. Sherbeck can resign from, his, from the vacancy committee and, his, and a new um, vacancy committee member be appointed who can be objective in this case, or Mr. Sherbeck can withdraw his application to become a supervisor. I request that the board make a motion for dealing with Mr. Sherbeck's conflict of interest along the lines I just outlined so these proceedings can be conducted fairly and without bias. That's my comment and thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess we'll... we'll uh... I, I, have, I have one more for uh, non-agenda items. Tim, please stand by to have your uh, phone. And Chris, thank you for your comment. I'm going to disable you. All right, can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. I can't hear you. I will be glad for so many reasons when this urge has passed. All right, can everyone hear me? Yes. All right, perfect. Sorry about that. I as well had some issues with uh, my audio device. Um, I, uh, I as well am a resident, uh, property owner and resident of the township. Um, actually, I grew up in the township and I moved back um, several years ago now. But I, I, I want to throw my support um, to what was just presented. So I fully support the position that was just presented. Uh, I, as well, I'm concerned that uh, that biased appointment process would be allowed, especially when there seems like there are probably qualified candidates that would be 
uh, out there and they should be given the opportunity to uh, serve their local community. So like I said, I'm uh, concerned and, um, you know, uh, owner here and resident in the township. And I, I think that we should have a process that allows for everyone to have a voice and opportunity to serve our local government. Uh, uh, thank you. And and uh, I, I think our secretary who's joining us remotely would be upset if I was, didn't mention, um, did you introduce yourself and provide an address? Uh, I apologize. My name is Tim Kettlety and I live at Three Darien Court. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Uh, uh, next in the queue is uh, Thomas R. Waters. Can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, excellent. Yeah, I just want to weigh in uh, and give my support to the statement that my sister Chris made. Again, I'm uh, a landowner in East Brandywine, grew up in East Brandywine Township, do not currently reside there. But um, when this was brought to my attention, it just seemed like, uh, <clears throat> you know, even on just basic, <clears throat> excuse me, on just basic grounds of parliamentary procedure, if you have someone who is serving on a committee that is interested <clears throat> in obtaining the position or a position that that person, especially if there's other, other qualified candidates, that person should recuse themselves from the process. Um, I think that's the only fair and I'm sure, you know, democratic way to proceed with this. So that's all I had to say. Thank you. All right, I am a, I'm a terrible radio producer here. I have um, John Swartz in the queue. However, I cannot promote him, and I'd like him to use a, a, a phone to call in. Um, and I also have Regina Griffith, who I will be uh, promoting here while I wait on John. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Okay. All right, we got to turn that off. Yeah, I would encourage you to, uh, if you have a laptop or an iPad, mute that. Yeah, well, I have the, I have the iPad, and uh, I guess have to turn off the volume on the iPad. All right, you have a four. I'm not sure if I have this off. Um, I am a... So <clears throat> Sorry, I gotta hang that up. Okay, is this better? Yes. 
so I'm John Schwartz. I'm a resident of East Brandywine. I live at 10 Cumberland Drive in Downingtown. And I uh, also, uh, uh, the last few uh, presenters in uh, stating that I, I think this is, uh, you know, not, I don't support what's going on in terms of uh, the position supervisor position and um uh i just think it's uh, it's not a good thing uh, what's going on what do you what do you, can you elaborate a little bit uh, uh, re regarding uh himself or has the, the position to appoint himself to a super, supervisor position sorry for the vacancy board and vote for himself? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Sorry, I'm still hearing an echo for some reason in my ear. Yeah, I, um, I, we heard you, so I, I think it was that, okay. was that your statement? Uh, yes. Okay. Th thank you. For Supporting the position of the previous callers. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Luke, have... hi, it's Regina. Hi, Regina. We can hear hi. you. Thank you. I just wanted to second the comments that were made previously concerning the conflict of interest. And um, Gina, I'm sorry, this is Chairman Scrivener. Um, what, uh, you're a resident of the township? I am, I apologize. I am a resident. I reside at 1628 Bondsville Road. Thank you very much. Uh, did you have any other comments to make tonight? No, I lost connection, so I'm sure there were other comments that have been made that I would support with respect to the opening presentation by Chris Waters, I think her name is. Um, and I agreed with everything that had been said. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, uh, th that is the end of the people who have asked to speak for non-agenda items. Uh, just bear in mind there are other opportunities on the specific agenda items. So, that. Um, okay, so I'm going to turn it over to the minute meetings for the June 18, 2020 Board of Supervisor, uh, Supervisor meeting minutes. Um, that's our first item. I, um, I again, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I know that there was some conversation between um, Scott and the board about perhaps adopting the minutes as just a consent item all at once. Yes, yes, so, because we had, we had them ahead of time, correct. And they are published on the, correct. So uh, we, the board's already had them and I, I was okay with that, I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, but I actually have a, I wanna change a couple of comments in the planning commission's meeting minutes. All right, so, um, so um, real quick, what I'll do is, um, um, do you want to make a motion um, for everything else, and then and then uh, and take your comments, make make your comments first, and then we'll make a motion for everything if, if you're done with that. Unless you have a comment. No. But I mean, what, so we're going to make a one motion. I wasn't here to have. Um, yeah, that was the email. That's why we had everything ahead of time. So we <laughs> okay, I'll make a motion to approve the. Get your points. Well, I'm going to say it except for that. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve the June 18th, 2020 Board of Supervisors um, meeting minutes, as well as the treasurer's report, and to pay the bills as expected. And um, I want to make some changes to the Planning Commission minutes. Uh, of this draft. Other changes? Well, it states things that I said that I didn't say. So all right, so let's let's do this. Let's let's do an approval of everything but the planning commission meetings um, minutes and then that that there. Yeah. Okay. Um so uh like the most important thing here is the treasurer's report. Mm -hmm. All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
and then we'll hold off on the, the planning commission meeting minutes. And I guess, do you want to talk about that now, or do you want to you want to bring that up to? I just re I just briefly glanced at it. And I just saw it. It just caught okay. my eye, so I can I'll mark it up and. So, uh, Lisa, I don't know if you can hear me, but if we can um, add the June third, twenty twenty planning commission meeting minutes back in the um, back in the uh, the. the uh, back in the um, next township meeting, which will be next month. Um, and I'm assuming that can be uh, the only one we'll hold out here tonight. Um, yes. And, and the other thing I was gonna say is the record is the record. It's on. It's on tape. Um, so if you needed to verify something you said or, or question something, obviously we have the tape. You can all, also do that too to get your. Yeah, but does the? I believe that <clears throat> our meeting minutes are supersede. You know. No, no, absolutely. But I'm just saying, use the tape to. to oh yeah, I thought I was going to do. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right. Was there anything pr uh, pressing for for for? Uh, Sure. And then how about you, Chief? Which Chief? I'm sorry. <laughs> the question, Kyle, I can't hear you. I, I was just seeing if you had anything pressing other than what we've got in the packet last over the week. No, everything, I'm fine. Okay, and then how about the fire department? Are they with us tonight? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, no, I don't have anything to add, Kyle. Oh, perfect. Well, thank you very much. Um, so, so uh, we're going to go on to uh, to new business uh, and and get on with the inter interview of the applicants for the vacant board of supervisor position. Um, before we do this, um, I would like to, um, as I as I, uh, Kristen, you're with us right now. I am. Okay. So, so for, for the uh, speeding of the process, so to speak, uh, I'm assuming I can go ahead and and um, accept Ken Ader's resignation tonight? You can make a motion to accept it, yes. So there's no problem with that. So then I'll go ahead and make a motion tonight to accept the resignation of Ken Ader uh, for Township Supervisor uh, uh, in, the, in the past. Um, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so his, his resignation is now accepted. Um, and before we continue this, I, I, I obviously we heard feedback from, from uh, some residents. I wanted to ask, obviously, a couple of them were, were pertaining to you, Mr. Sherbeck. Did you want to um, stay on the on the, uh, on the vacancy board, or did you have somebody in mind to, to appoint in your in your place that we can discuss while we're here? There's no reason. I was put on the board, uh, when I was put on the vacancy board, both you and Lisa, that I was a good candidate. The vacancy board also acts as a supervisor in waiting. Both of you felt at that time that I was a good candidate that somebody came in and didn't run without any problem. All right. Uh, gave me a legal opinion that indicates that all right. run. I, 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 sorry, this is a, just a technical point of order. Um, those of us in the room can, can hear um, Bruce uh, when he speaks yeah, and, and George when he speaks. However, mm -hmm. and, unless you're seated near the area mic, no one at home can hear. Yeah. And again, if that's all, I, I just wanted to ask before we continued here. I, um, okay. So then, so then uh, uh, let's, let's get on with the interviews and um, we'll start with that. Um, First one that we have on the on the agenda here is uh, Carl Croft. And again, what we'll do is we'll try to obviously we have some people that are that are joining remotely. Um, they'll they'll be linked in via phone. I'm assuming not video as well. But um, we'll start with the one you know. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to try and keep this to a three to five minute um, um, you know. Uh, Introduction. Obviously, we're very fortunate. Every one of you guys is, is well, well respected and well 
and out in our township and uh, your accolades speak for themselves. I assume this is where the... Yes, please. Yes. It's okay to take Absolutely. It. I fog up and can't see that. <clears throat> uh, good evening. My name is Carl Croft, and I want to thank you for taking the time to review my application for the vacant township supervisor position. I'm a 41-year resident of East Brandywine Township. I moved here from Euclid Township because I could see that the zoning in Euclid Township was going to make it very overcrowded and congested over the next 30, 40 years, while East Brandywine was planned more, more proficiently and properly for family-oriented purposes. My, fam my, family and my family's and my experience in East Brandywine Township has been fantastic and with a long record of working to help make East Brandywine a better place to live, I would like to now use my experience from serving on the Open Space Committee, uh, serving on the Planning Commission, and the Budget Committee, as well as I just completed it in two, two four-year terms for a total of eight years as the Township's School Board Director. And it just so happens that through hard work, I was able to carve out a region. We have nine School Board Directors representing nine separate regions. East Brandywine is only one of two places it's the entire township I represent. It's not split like other townships. <coughs> Although I outlined my accomplishments in my resume. Although I outlined my comments and accomplishments as a school board director in my resume, I do want to highlight some things that were of special interest to our residents. First and foremost, the first thing I did when I got on the board is, you know, the downtown school district and the township had a lawsuit. I met with the attorneys to convince the board to drop the lawsuit. So I thought that was a big help to the township and that it was kind of a ridiculous lawsuit to begin with. I worked with the finance department then to help develop a real cash flow projections that could be used for future budgeting. Helped all departments to not only pro prioritize needs, but to eliminate wants. Develop a five-year capital budget to allow proper planning of capital expenditures. Modifying capitalization policies to reduce our charter school reimbursements. Develop a marketing plan to bring back charter school students that was very successful. <clears throat> we brought back over 40% of the first and second graders, or kindergarten and first graders once that marketing program was instituted. Uh, also, I personally negotiated 11 co labor contracts, including 11 years worth of teachers' contracts. The last contract negotiated was the last month of my service on the board with one other board member. We, we now have a con teacher's contract through, through 2025. A part of the process was indicating the school board that you can negotiate contracts without outside lawyers. All 11 contracts were done with myself and other members of the school board on a rotating basis saved over $2 million in legal costs over the eight years. Uh, helped to realign and retire certain school debt to better match our cash flow projections so as not to cause erratic tax increases, and educated the school board tax increases are not should not be automatic and are needed just for the sake of doing it because you can. Uh, in addition, help to reorganize the administrative function to promote efficiency. This and much other hard work has produced eight years of no tax increases in the Downingtown School District. Uh, I actually served for four years as the uh, vice president of the board my last four years. I was in the minority, minority, but if you go back and look at the record, we had almost all unanimous votes. Um, and that's because we worked hard to make sure everybody understood and everybody's questions were answered. Answered, And even if you may not have agreed to something, we, we, we can work out compromises or other ways of bringing uh, a unanimous vote. Other experiences you should know about include that I was a founding and managing shareholder of Croft Drills and Company CPAs in Exton for 35 years. 
The firm specialized in real estate developers, construction, nonprofits, service industries, and governmental accounting. I actually still maintain my CPA license, even though I've been retired for 12 years. I was also a certif certified valuation analyst. And that's the person who goes around and values businesses for mergers, acquisition, divorces, etc. And uh, I was a certified customer service trainer, which was a is where we helped our service industries learn how to give five-star customer service to increase their profits. I spent a lifetime volunteering. I was an original founding member of the Euclid Ambulance Corps back in 1977. I'm a member of the Chester County United Way Board of Directors for over eight years. Uh, I was also president of the Exonet Chamber of Commerce, Commerce. Eight years of baseball coach with EBYA back in the early years and 10 years as a scoutmaster or committee chairman of Hopewell Group, group A. I mention all this because I applied for the supervisor vacancy without any agenda or preconceived ideas concerning the issues facing the township. I would like to use my varied background and experience to assist the supervisors in leading the township to continued success, as well as possibly provide a different perspective to the township. Township is actually very fortunate to have six very qualified residents who have applied, and I appreciate the difficulty you face in making your selection. I thank you for your time, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. I don't have any questions. As I said, I, I had a pleasure of knowing everybody in this. As well as uh, the others in remote participation. So I, I don't. I'm good. Uh, I'm not at this time. Um, I appreciate you, appreciate you coming out and, and volunteering, and I enjoy listening more about your accomplishments and the reasons, various reasons why you like to step into the position. Okay. Thank you very much. So our next candidate would be George Sherbeck. The uh, time frame. Time if we can stick to three to five minutes, again, if we go with six minutes, it's it's not the other world. I'm just trying to. Okay. Let's call the cut, cut sign. <laughs> hey, good evening. My name is George Sherbeck. I am a 12 year resident of East Brandywine Township, and we're uh, we're thrilled to be here. As soon as I got into the township, I started coming to the public uh, supervisor meetings, and I've been a regular attendee ever since. So I've had a great opportunity to see what this township has done over the over those 12 years. My background is vast. Okay, I've got a vast. Normal speaking voice. So let's try. It. I have a vast. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, Lee. I have a vast amount of business experience. I've been fortunate that early on in life, I was able to get my master's of business administration. I started with an insurance company and rose all the way through the ranks. And I've had an opportunity to work in all the different phases of an insurance company. I was a regional manager and I had 12 offices under me. And in those offices, I had to make sure they were operating right. We had good personnel and we got results. I also ran the claims department, vice president of claims department that was over several states. Eventually became president of an insurance company. So you can see I've been involved in management capacity and leadership opportunities. I've had the opportunity uh, to also get involved in some charitable uh, affairs. I've worked with Good Works, 
which is out of Westchester for several years through my church. I participate in Habitat for Humanity, and I've been on various chambers of commerce, namely Westchester and Exton. My wife and I, Barbie and I, currently are members of the Hopewell Methodist Church, and we're thrilled to be at that church. As far as the township concerned, as I told you, I've been coming to meetings for 12 years, and I would say uh, not too many people have gone more than I have, perhaps Bruce Rawlings and a few others, but there can't be more than 10 people who have come to these meetings every night to listen, offer feedback. This township is a business, and it needs to be run by a business. I've also had the opportunity to look for good people because when I came on board, I wanted to see good supervisors get in position. I ran the, the uh, campaign for Kyle Scribner to get on this board. I ran it for Arnie Kring, got involved with Arnie Kring. I didn't run it. I got involved in seeing that Arnie Kring got elected. I've also run it for Jason Winters. I'm also proud of running a campaign for the best, collect, best tax collector this township has ever had. Dennis Mulhern is an absolute credit, collects all the taxes. Every taxpayer that calls, he responds in 24 hours. That's what I call service, and that's what I call getting the job done. Basically, I feel our township has been stuck in the mud for the past 20 years. I don't think we're getting the job done. I think there's a lot of things we can do. If it takes one and a half years to, to write an HR manual, something's wrong. If our emergency operations plan from 2012 never changes, something's wrong. I don't think we're getting things done that we need to get done. It's important. And I think right now we lack some leadership, management, and communication in this township. And I believe we also lack real good customer service. When a customer calls up and says, I would like to send an email to the three township supervisors, and the employee responds and says, well, it's on the website, look it up. I, I just can't, I can't handle that kind of customer service for our taxpayers. So my job is to, as a supervisor, I'm deeply interested. I think I have a lot to offer. I want to get in and take a look at every facet of our operation because I think things can be improved, streamlined. There's a lot of improvements that can be done to make us better than we are today. I would spend time with every employee finding out what they do, what their feedback is, and why they think things should or should not be changed. We need to move forward. I'm proud of my township, but we haven't reached anywhere near the maximum potential that this township has to offer. And I believe with my background, experience, knowledge of the township, and knowledge of both supervisors that I can bring unity to the board, leadership to the board, and have this township move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Again, I have to. Uh, <clears throat> I've known you for years, so there's nothing that I can think of off the top of my head that would affect. Um, no, I, I know you um, as well, and um, I, to comment on the, some of the comments earlier today, uh, this evening, you know, I don't believe that we can decide what a conflict of interest is for someone else, and um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you have a conflict of interest and you should do anything. But I voted for you to get the vacancy board for your sound judgment, for your experience. Um, that's what that position is for. I think that there was an issue that should have been brought up in 18, 19, or 20. Um, and just to touch further on myself voting for you, as well as Kyle, uh, Jay Fisher also voted for you, and he was here for 26 years and knows all the issues. And I think that in itself is um, enough for me. 
too. It, it was a unanimous vote to put me yeah. on the vacancy so board. I don't feel that by all be, three supervisors at that time. So I don't think that I can sit here and say anything, um, you know, qualification wise, why you would not be as well as anyone that wants to volunteer. So that's, that's and I think the law shows that it's not a conflict of interest. No, it's not. I mean, all right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank, you Thank you very you. much for your time. Uh, Bruce you. Rawlings would be up next. Uh, at, the, at the risk of, of, of sounding like I'm nagging, um, just a reminder, I'm getting feedback about the board members being a little distant from the microphones. Okay. Uh, Bruce, before you get up there, um, just for sake of an argument, maybe we'll start wiping down that area. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Just, just to... I got two microphones. Well, I, I, I turned it all the way down for, for George, who projects very well. And uh, now I've got to turn it back up. Pass, pass, pass. Is that you good? At home without you know, you know how to use a microphone. Good evening. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, interview. Uh, I put my name in the hat because I thought I could uh, be a help for the township uh, for this short little term that initially uh, Ken has disappeared on and we, uh, we're looking at a year and a half roughly of a, a super supervisor. I, I, I've been living in this township for since 94. I built my home in 94 off of Reeds Road. Um, my family's been living here. They enjoyed uh, the beautiful surroundings of East Brandywine Township. They've used all the activities from sports to uh, ball fields to to all the events we always have here. So uh, we, this, we, we moved here because we wanted to have the quality of life uh, that a lot of townships don't have. I, when I came here, I kind of came onto the planning commission by stumbling into a, a meeting. And uh, next thing I know, uh, everybody's asking me to join. And I, so I joined as uh, a non-voting member, uh, did that for a couple years. And also next thing I know, I uh, was put on the board. And another year later, I was vice chair. And another year later, I became chairman. And it's been uh, quite a, over 20 years that I've been chairman of the planning commission. So I've seen a lot gone by, I've uh, made a lot of recommendations, a lot of turndowns. Uh, I, uh, I don't have the qualifications of an accountant or anything like that, but I have a lot of practical experience. I did run businesses, I've had employees. Uh, I now am working my way to be retired, which is gonna be very nice. <laughs> uh, so I feel I, can help the township because I have time to, to do that. Uh, I'm not afraid to come in the meeting and say what I feel, uh, but I also feel everybody has an opinion and everybody needs to be listened to. And that's, I think it's very important. I try to be fair with everybody all the time. Um, I come, I pre-read all my meeting notes, I uh, prepare, I have an agenda, but I let the look at word that the board uh, talk first, and then, and then I try to guide them in a direction of what needs to be accomplished for that meeting. I've had great help from all the township uh, employees, uh, uh, the ones that are here, ones that aren't. Uh, great help from the school, uh, members that have now re uh, either resigned or uh, are not a part of the, the board anymore. But. I feel I can be a very strong element in, to help everybody uh, move forward until the next uh, go around of voting, which is what roughly a year and a half. At that point, I would, if I am uh, a become a board of supervisors, I would decide if I would want to run or if you want me to stay on. I would, we would talk about that. But right now, there's a short term need. Uh, I do know about budgets. I grant businesses. Uh, I, I, I'm very practical, and I, and I worry about safety of everybody. The safety is important. Uh, I just feel I'm a good candidate to 
help this township move forward. That's all I have to say. No, I, and I appreciate it. I know you, you as well as um, Jim Basal were the two out almost immediately when we had a uh, shortfall in the supervisor's position. So um, I appreciate that as well. Um, I, I know Bruce. We have some strong candidates here. Uh, and yeah, I mean, honestly, the township will be suited well with everybody. Or we can all, always just make it five uh, supervisors and then uh, have a good diversity. It's not one like that. But. Thank you. I want, I want to thank you for coming as well. Thank you. Okay, uh, now we have uh, Sandy Moser remotely uh, participation, and I'll turn this over to Luke to see if he's able to get her on the line. Hi, Sandy. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, we can hear and see you. Yes. Thank you. Hello, Sandy. Go ahead. Okay. Good evening. My name is Sandy Moser. I've lived at 100 Hadfield Road, East Brandywine Township for 49 years, raised my children here, and I've been engaged in many township committees and programs during my residency here, which I'll talk about in a minute. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this evening in consideration of my application for supervisor. Because of my work on township committees and programs, I, I've developed and enjoyed relationships with many township residents, especially recently while working on the Mill Gardens and Trails. I very much appreciate these relationships and I hear their concerns about the future of our township. I believe I am best positioned to represent the residents, all residents of East Brandywine Township as a township supervisor. Now a little bit more about my job qualifications. As my attached resume shows, I bring many years of township experience to this position. In addition to my township experience, my years of public service on both county and state boards will be useful to the township and benefit this board. One of the most important positions that I've taken on East Brandywine for, for East Brandywine Township is that of protecting the township residents' drinking water supply. This was and is important because over half of our residents rely on their well water supply. Protecting the water supply was very important to me and our neighbors, and my record on the municipal authority confirms how we achieved that protection. Going forward, we need to be mindful that new development needs to comply with the policies put in place and ensure our water supply is safe for all residents. Another area of concern to me is that we do our best to protect the township's remaining open space. This needs to be a priority. I suppose it's needless to say that I fully support the township's open space program. I went on to serve on the state's Growing Greener Committee. As a member of this committee, we worked tirelessly to get legislative approval for this program. Funding from this program continues to help communities improve and expand parks, build and maintain walking trails, which so many of our neighbors enjoy. One example of the benefits from this program is the Bondsville Mill Park. As many of you may know, I serve on the Bondsville Mill Park Committee. I guess you could say that I'm the head gardener. The first two years weren't easy, but I now have a great crew of gardening volunteers. The Mill Park receives so many compliments. I wish that uh, both you, Kyle, and Jason could spend some time just standing on the bridge at the mill to hear those compliments firsthand from park visitors and enjoy the sounds of the children fishing or wading in the creek. One positive from the virus lockdown has been the mill park providing a wonderful haven for families to get outside safely and enjoy the mill surroundings while learning about nature. Over the years, in addition to the work I've done on various committees and networking with many of our residents, I have also enjoyed a close and good working relationship with our township staff members. Networking has been very helpful in allowing me to develop various township programs. As supervisor, I'd be very interested in expanding the availability of additional programs for residents, perhaps for the newly retired. The township has meeting rooms, both large and small, that could be used for lectures or book clubs, for example. There is interest in this as the popularity of the Bonsville Mills nature programs and the Historic Commission's program show. I think in the near future, we'll be asked to promote outdoor activities for our residents as well. More and more articles are being published regarding the public health benefits of parks and trails. Programs on this topic would certainly benefit township residents, and in my opinion, help to unite our community. I would also like to revisit our zoning ordinances, particularly commercial zoning. 
And look how the changes, how the challenges of online purchasing has changed and challenged businesses. I worked on the committee for the Guthriesville Master Plan. From that, I know what kinds of businesses might have been inter interested in locating gear in East Brandywine, but now maybe not. I'm very aware of the time commitment needed to be a full-time supervisor. I am retired, but I'm not a snowbird. So you can count on me being available for all meetings and whenever necessary. In closing, should you select me to fill the open seat, please know that I will not take advantage of the very generous healthcare benefits offered to the elected supervisors. Thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you very much, Sandy. Um, our next participant is in the building. So we'll turn it over to Greg Wagner. I'm sorry, did you have any questions for Sandy? No, nope. I want to thank her for coming in. Yeah, thank you, Sandy. And again, I didn't have any questions either. I apologize. I didn't say that. So. Okay, Greg, thank you. Good evening. Welcome. Thanks. In the interest of time, um, I feel it's necessary to go through all of my professional qualifications I feel I have for the job. I think if you had an opportunity to read the letter that I submitted, it should give you a pretty good overview of what I've done and what I'm about and why I feel that I would be a good fit for this position. Uh, instead, I just wanted to take this opportunity to talk about a couple of things that may not have been mentioned in the letter or were mentioned only briefly. Part of my uh, primary qualification for this is that when I moved here to Chester County 12 years ago, straight out of college, I didn't know anybody. I was just starting a business in the depth of the financial crisis. And I built that business from absolutely nothing to a multi-million dollar company that it is now. And I think that as small business minded individuals, you both are, that you can appreciate that kind of entrepreneurial initiative and spirit. And that's what we need more of at all levels of government, not just local government. Uh, we could definitely use it here in East Brandywine. Now, beyond, uh, beyond that, uh, obviously, in the last 10 years, I've had a lot of opportunity to work with planning commissions and boards of supervisors all across Chester County, learning to navigate the differences between them. I think I would be a good fit, uh, certainly, for this board. Another important qualification, and one that's a little hard to miss uh, looking around the room, is that by a country mile, I am the uh, youngest applicant that you have for the position. And I don't view it as a liability, especially given my experience. I view it as an asset, and this board has certainly gotten younger in recent years. And I think that's a positive step in, in working with other planning commissions and other boards of supervisors. The average age is quite a bit older than the three of us. Uh, and I think that it's important that we get that, uh, that younger initiative involved at this level of government to set new priorities for the township. I'm coming here with no baggage. I'm coming here with no pre-existing relationships or alliances or agendas or to tell either one of you how to do your job. I think I can be an independent voice here in the township to work on behalf of township residents. I know that uh, that's maybe the kind of thing that's easy to say because it sounds good. Um, but as part of that, uh, I'm not going to accept any annual salary for this position. I'm not interested in accepting any benefits. I've been fortunate in my career in the public sector. I don't think that I need to take that. And I think that that's an example that should be set in local government because that is the attitude that we need to bring efficiency. Looking for savings for taxpayers has to be the absolute number one priority. People expect great services and quality of life. That's why I moved to East Brandywine. That's why people are coming here in droves right now. And we're having a boom in development that has to be handled responsibly. As a builder and a developer, I think I have a good perspective on ways that we can do that. I really appreciate the uh, opportunity. You've got plenty of great applicants, as everybody said. Everybody's extremely well qualified. I wish you the best of luck in your decision. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, again, I, I've had the pleasure of meeting you before, so um, I, I, and interviewing you before, so I I don't have any questions. I'll turn it over to Jason to see if he does. Uh, no, I do not at this time. Um, coming out and, and talking to us. Good luck. Thank you very Thank you. much. Okay, and uh, our last tonight would be uh, Jim Baksala uh, remotely participating and. Um, I'm assuming Luke can pull him up. I'm a little behind the eight ball. Please bear with me here.
Hi, Jim. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Are you going to use a camera tonight or just your audio? Uh, well, I was looking to see if I could turn the camera on, but it doesn't need to be on. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Uh, first, I, I'd like to uh, to thank uh, Chairman uh, Scribner and uh, Mr. Mr. Winters uh, for including me uh, remotely. I would certainly be there tonight if I could. Uh, I happen to be home uh, with the uh, coronavirus. Um, one of the first things and, and fundamental things about me is um, that I, I take my commitments uh, seriously. Um, as um, anyone that's uh, worked with me on the various boards of the township or other organizations, uh, they, they know I come to uh, meetings uh, prepared to participate and uh, to talk through things and uh, to, to make decisions. Um, also fundamental to my management style is I am open-minded. I, I truly believe in uh, bringing all perspectives to the table for consideration and talking through things and coming to uh, a consensus and a decision uh, together with my compatriots uh, and, and moving forward. Um, I, um, I'm a team builder. Um, I, in every, everything I've been involved with, I've, um, uh, been in a leadership role, um, the EBYA, um, since, uh, before 2005, um, and the last uh, coaching and, and heading up the, uh, the, the uh, older boys, um, um, soccer, uh, divisions, um, for 13 years. Uh, I've been involved with the township since 2005 uh, on the Historical Commission, uh, Planning Commission, and um, the uh, Bonsville Mill Park Committee. I'm currently the chair of the Bonsville Mill Park Committee. I'm the vice chair of the Planning Commission and the vice chair of the Historical Commission. And uh, I was the chair of the Historical Commission uh, for seven years, uh, during which time we, we developed our uh, public education program, our speaking series uh, that we have every spring and fall. Um, in, in project management, uh, professionally, I, I headed um, a diverse group of professionals um, doing scientific research uh, in uh, environmental uh, re remediation. And um, I have a scientific uh, mindset. I uh, digest uh, large uh, data sets uh, of information and boil them down and resolve them into uh, a summary uh, and a, a description uh, to provide meaning to the information. Uh, it's, it's something that I, I'm used to doing. Um, and I, I can tell you uh, that as a supervisor, um, I will not come in with a preconceived notions. I will come in with an open mind, uh, willing to listen to all perspectives and work through uh, a decision with uh, both you and uh, Mr. Winters. Um, and um, fundamentally, I will be making decisions um, the best I can to the best benefit um, of our fellow residents in, in the township. Um, I'm Apologize if I have reiterate, reiterated uh, some of what I said uh, last month, but uh, I, I think I I think that's uh, a good summary. And and I have a strong desire to serve. In, in fact, I, I ran a formal campaign for the position in 2017. So it's something I've thought about before, um, and it's something that uh, I, I I would be good at. Um, again, an open mind and. and consider all, all information available to me. Thank you very much, Jim. And as I said to um, to Bruce as well, you two were the very first to uh, to offer your support to help us through our shortfall. And I appreciate that gesture as well. Uh, I don't have any questions. I've known you for a while and you, you, everything you say speaks volumes. Uh, Jason, anything you have? Uh, no, Jim, I want to thank you as well. And um, thanks for coming out and speaking about your accomplishments and I appreciate your already volunteering so much for the township and uh, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, yes.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so uh, as you, as everybody at home has seen, we have, you know, a very fortunate township with all these wonderful candidates, and uh, um, obviously there's uh, there's a lot to digest here. But I want to thank everybody for coming out, and those of you who are on the phone, I want to thank you for your participation tonight. And um, um, I would just you know, like to say we're, again, we're a very fortunate township to have the, uh, the, the amount of sincere interest in, in volunteering for, for, uh, for what we have to deal with. Thank you very much. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Scott now for the approval of the final draft of the regular. Uh, I'm sorry, again, with the, the technical point of order here. Um, there, there, was, there was um, there was an individual, uh, Regina, who spoke on the agenda item, which was things not on the agenda, who would now like to address on the um, the new business. Understood. Yeah, Regina, are you please, with us? Please stand by. I am here. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Mike is yours. Thank you. Um, thank you for letting me um, ask questions. Um, I had um, a question for Mr. Sherbeck. Um, I agree with him with respect to his comment concerning client service, and I consider us as residents as being your clients um, and being um, told to refer to a web page when calling in for information. I, 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 I fully support what Mr. Sherbeck said with respect to that. Also, um, in Mr. Sherbeck's comments, um, he had mentioned that he had supported uh, both you, Chairman, and Mr. Winters with respect to your campaigns. And yet, um, Mr. Sherbeck, correct me if I'm wrong, I also heard you say that you didn't think the township was being run perhaps, you know, to good standards or your standards. I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but that was my takeaway. And yet those two candidates um, you supported and they're now the township supervisors. and. I'm sure you've had appropriate discussions and conversations with them concerning um, the way the, the township is currently being managed. Um, in addition, um, I I wanted to comment on um, your your comment concerning you didn't think the township was living up to its full potential, and I was wondering if you could provide an example of what you see as the township's potential that we might be missing. And I, and I will state uh, for the record, if anybody does not feel comfortable answering questions, don't feel as though you have to answer questions. If, if you, I just want to keep the record. That option. Uh, first of all, um, I'm trying to remember because you posed three questions. With Well, two with, were comments. I guess my question primarily is, is well, in the township's creating the, the township, the supervisors, is they're like an oversight. I'm talking about the day-to-day -day operations. That's oh, right. Oh, the staff. Yeah. Am I being interrupted or I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what's happening? I, I don't I, know what that was. I, uh, I, 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 I advise uh, uh, Ms. Ms. Corbin, your, your mic is on. So as I have you next in the queue. Is that a comment by her? I, I don't think it was a, a voluntary. <laughs> when the I, don't mic, I don't. I don't. I don't think you, if that's in, any indication. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Regina, do you want to repeat uh, the last question? Yes. Um, could you provide an example as to what you think the township potential might be now. that we're yeah. currently missing? After I just had a live mic problem. Yeah. Uh, I am I'm going to I'm going to manually mute on this end, please. Mr. Sharpak, would you like me to repeat that again? Oh, no, I got it. I was just waiting for the interruption to be taken care of. <laughs> uh, okay. So Regina, I think there's a lot of things. I you know I can pose a couple examples. I pose the HR manual. This. This uh, township didn't have an HR manual update in 10 to 15 years. No one in this township gets a performance appraisal, I believe, and have not for 
10, 15 years, I believe. And if I'm wrong, correct me. Everybody gets the same pay raise. So if you do a better job than I do, Regina, we both get the same increase. I've been on the budget committee and I've seen major abuses. Uh, some of the ones that I'll mention is this township used for several years a debit card. I think that's insane. Uh, also, credit card purchases, there's not a receipt for every single purchase that was made. And there are purchases that are extremely dubious that lead me to believe that we're just not having enough financial oversight in spending the money and looking to see that it's wisely done. So. That's just an example in a couple areas. So basically what I think I hear you saying is that you're looking for internal controls and maybe in the form of policies and procedures as, as put into writing and into manuals and things like that. That's a great start, Regina. Yeah. Well, we, we share a similar background. I too come out of uh, Cigna and Lincoln Financial. So uh, um, I'm well aware of your background as well, but thank you. you. Know how Financial controls are, they're extremely important. Agreed, agreed. May I also follow up on something I think I heard Sandy say, Luke, or Chairman, I'm sorry. Yeah. Gina, real quick, I'm gonna interrupt. It's, it's uh, Supervisor Scribner. I'm gonna set, I wanna let uh, uh, Mr. Sherbeck sit back down um, uh, just so that we can go to the second question. Just, um, you're done with Mr. Sherbeck then? I am, thank you. I just wanted to follow up and I'm not quite sure who's going to answer but I thought I heard Sandy say something about not being a snowbird, which caught my attention because I'm wondering if any of our candidates here are maybe part-time residents or maybe aren't here full-time throughout the year. I didn't see everybody's resume, so I, and I don't know all of the candidates personally, so I don't know if any of our candidates perhaps, you know, head to warmer climates in the winter months and wouldn't be available for the township business. Um, I guess it's kind of a little. Here, 365 days. Yeah, just to answer, just to answer, um, um, I'll try to do this as quick as possible. Um, uh, Carl Croft just said he's here the entire year, so that answers that answers for him. If anybody else wants, to, Bruce Bruce uh, um, Bruce Rawlings has also stated he's here uh, the entire year minus one day. Uh, Okay, Mr. Sherbeck said he's via uh, he's he's available via Zoom uh, when he is in Florida uh, on vacation. Um, and then, Mr. Wagman, I, you're here if you want to answer. No, no big deal. I'm not ready to retire. Okay. <laughs> As he is. And then I'll, I'll also offer that out to the other two um, who were joining remotely, Sandy and Jim. If, if, if he knows it's still uh, um, available to, to. Am I am I still on, Luke? Yes, yes, you are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I've already I've already said I, everything I'm involved with. I have a strong commitment towards. I prepare for the meetings, and uh, I I rarely miss a meeting. And anybody uh, will tell you that's been involved in the committees and the commissions and the groups that I've been involved with. I I am there for whatever it is I'm committed to. So I will be there. I, I appreciate that, and then I think I'll put words in Sandy's mouth. And and she did say in in her in her interview that she is not a snowbird and she is here. So. I think that answers that. Um, Regina. And, and this, is my, this is my last comment, I promise you. Yeah. So with respect to Zoom, aren't there times when each of you have to be physically present in order to sign documents or pay bills or things like that? And I'm not quite sure how you would get that done through Zoom. Um, I will Just, say that, that um, you know, we have a policy right now, it's a little different with COVID, but it's two supervisors um, can sign for the three. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate your, your consideration and letting me speak. Thank you. Um, Luke. All right, Becky, your, your microphone is coming live. Live? Yes. Okay. Now you're back. Now you're back. This is Becky Corbin. Um, I'm a resident of East Brandywine Township, 16 Hawk Hill Road, 
and I don't have questions. I just had a couple comments that I wanted to make. <clears throat> I feel the appointed supervisor should be available to attend all meetings. And either, there are other obligations that may come along, and I think it's important that supervisors be there and be available, and also have no hidden agenda. I think a candidate with financial experience would certainly help us address some future challenges I think we're going to be facing with all the potential expenditures that may pop up as a result of this COVID-19 crisis. Um, I feel a candidate with diverse experience would certainly benefit all the residents of East Brandywine Township. And I trust the supervisors will look at all of the can candidates and their contributions to the township and not rely on their personal relationships. Thank you for allowing me to make a comment. Thank you very much. Um, Luke, I, it's going so fast on the screen, I can't even keep up, but you, you probably have record of who's next if there is somebody. Uh, at, at, at this time, I have no further comment. Okay. I mean, this screen is crazy. Isn't it? I see. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's, let's, um, let's stop that for the minute and then um, um, give a chance to catch up. Uh, I'll turn it over to Scott now for the approval of the final draft of the Brandywine Trust. Sustainable community assessment. Thank you. Uh, provided to our Oregon Task Force, which you and Mr. Winters are members of, uh, the Brainy Wine Conservancy's Sustainable Community Assessment uh, last Friday via email, and it's also in your packets this evening. Um, both uh, David Sweet and I, along with members of our ordinance task force um, made comment uh, at our, uh, I believe it was the June 16th ordinance task force meeting about the draft uh, SCA, as we call it for short. Uh, this document was um, recommended by our ordinance task force as a means to uh, have an outside agency review our current uh, ordinance regulations, land use regulations, uh, and uh, basically it's a, a scorecard on where we're strong, where we might use some improvement, and where we're weak. And that's basically what the assessment report does. Uh, uh, in, the, in the interim month, uh, Meredith Meyer from the Brainy Wine Conservancy and John Filacter, the, the assistant director, uh, uh, worked on the revisions um, that David Sweet and I uh, funneled to them uh, from the uh, June 16th meeting. And uh, what you have before you is essentially the outline of uh, their report, which will, my next, uh, Topic, and that would be our uh, proposed vision partnership grant application. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, and I know both uh, Bruce Rawlings and Jim Buxala were uh, very much involved in this. And uh, Bruce, if you have anything to say, or Jim, if you have anything to say further, um, you know, please do so. Uh, but I would recommend to the board that the ordinance task force in their meeting last night recommended that the uh, the board approve this as the final draft for the uh, sustainable community assessment. Uh, as well as the task force uh, that was in the Uh, Kristen, did you have any any uh, insight to this that I didn't that I missed? Not really. It's just a policy decision as to whether the board wants to go down this path. And, uh, Jason, I I would uh, just point out that um, yeah. Yeah, this ahead. this document will um, be used to help guide the uh, the update of the uh, comprehensive plan.
And if there are any questions, I'm sure we can answer those. The biggest change between the June 16th draft, which both of you also received, right. and this draft was uh, I had identified uh, in our um, sewage disposal section. They were, for anyone conservancy, we provided an early draft of the uh, update of the 537 plan and got the impression that we were favoring uh, stream discharge for primary disposal. And that's actually contrary to um, our uh, desires going forward. We do have uh, both of the treatment plants that we offer do have a stream discharge function. The Keats Glen plant, which is a small package plant that serves the Keats Glen development and also the Delaware County Community College campus in East Brandywine Township, not Downingtown. Um, uh, that has only a stream discharge function because there is no land application possible there. Uh, the Apple Cross treatment plant does have a stream discharge function, which is tested from time to time as an emergency backup. Uh, but it is not the primary source of disposal. And it also costs more for that type of disposal than the uh, storage for irrigation of the golf course or the subsurface disposal on the driving range at Applecross. So that was the only that's that's there, there were a couple other things they added um, for the two things we talked about last night uh, uh, these pop-up brew, brew pubs those types of things as an option uh, that they suggested we look at but that's the, these are suggested recommendations. That was my question because I see recommendation a lot in here so it's not a um, lockdown. But as, as I said and, and Jim and Bruce both said that this is a guidance document for things that that will uh, hopefully focus on with the update to our <laughs> Overall when you read the document uh, I think that uh, we graded out very well. There were a couple things. Uh, alternate energy was one thing that they picked out. And somehow, eight years ago, we missed, we enacted solar uh, energy regulations and missed out on wind. At the time, geothermal wasn't the thing. Uh, it is now. Uh, so we're looking at that right now. And we'll add that. There's other alternative energy uh, systems that are out there, methane, uh, biogases, and other things that are coming along that uh, we should plan for. So Brandywine Conservancy identified these, and moving forward with the comp plan update, uh, we're hopeful to include those in our application to the County Planning Commission. Um, Bruce or Jim, anything else to add? Jason, any questions? Um, no, I'm, I'd like to review it um, first. Um, I'm not really ready to uh, take any action on it. All right, so Supervisor Winters is going to review it. Um, um, so I guess we'll we'll table this to the next to the next meeting, um, and then uh, we'll turn it over to the uh, Chester County Vision um, Chester County Vision Partnership Program grant application <coughs> for the comp plan. And I don't know. Uh, if you want to do that one now, then Scott, too, or if you want to hold on on that. It's basically uh, this is a status update on uh, where we are in the planning process to uh, submit an application. The, um, the, first, the first step was to uh, present the basic outline for the scope of work uh, which we're doing tonight and the basic 
that one is the uh, Granny Wine Conservancy uh, report. Uh, we have a meeting scheduled uh, with uh, Sugas and Elks and Jimmy Spears either off the 10th or the 18th, uh, to which is a required uh, application step. Um, we'll uh, refine the scope of work which is just a very basic work scope. It's not necessary to have details for that, um, uh, for the application. That's more for the consultant that will be chosen if we're successful in uh, obtaining a grant. The application needs to be submitted no later than September 25th. Uh, awards are to be announced November 10th. And uh, the consultant selection process occurred uh, within 120 days of the announcement of the uh, the grant award, the maximum grant is fifty thousand uh, dollars. There's a minimum match. Typically, what happens with these grants, since we've been fortunate to have three in the past, was the more uh, we can put toward the match, the higher we score. So uh, we'll discuss that. One of the other items to the uh, to the project, which we uh, determined that the County Planning Commission BPP grant process will fund, is an update of that official map. Um, and David threw David Sweet, our consultant, threw in a couple options there, where if the uh, um, we apply for, uh, for example, if the projects. Uh, anticipated to, to cost seventy thousand dollars. We applied for forty-five thousand with uh, twenty-five thousand match. We're at sixty-four percent versus fifty percent. So it's the, again the the higher our match, the better chance we stand of of uh, being success, uh, successful. These are highly competitive grants, uh, but the one thing that the county looks at is that. Um, uh, we're building on uh, projects that we've done before. And in this case, that the um, county has funded through their VPP grant process. Um, section three lists some of the items that uh, would be part of the, um, uh, the application, which are, uh, again, uh, uh, part of the major sustainable communities assessment report categories. Um, then uh, other assessments would include things like where are we with the Guthriesville master plan and the strategies, uh, build out analysis, uh, affordable housing, which is a hot button right now, uh, especially with um, County Planning Commission. Uh, we had a uh, presentation about affordable housing from one of the county planning commission planners. Um, uh, Jim Buxala has been uh, proposing for some time the township becoming a certified local government agency as far as historic resources and districts. Uh, that was recommended in our 2009 plan. Uh, and again, we updated the the official map, and there's there's an outline of some of the things that uh, are required as part of the process. Once we uh, are successful, and I feel very strongly that we will be successful, um, resident survey, which we did in 2006 when we did our 2009 update, comp plan update. Uh, we have social media now, which is much more used, uh, township newsletters. There will be a requirement for uh, two to three public meetings during the drafting process to bring people up to, to date on uh, where we are. Uh, obviously, we use our website to pu uh, publish this, uh, reporting at supervisors' meetings on progress. And then, uh, <clears throat> obviously, the uh, uh, presenting the final draft plan to the Board of Supervisors with a public meeting, which is required prior to adoption. So that's a quick summary of the 
entire process much more complicated than that, but that's a, a good overview. That's due uh, in August? Well, we, we need to be close to having that final uh, finalized as far as the, um, the application so that um, obviously the board needs to authorize submitting the grant prior to the application prior to September 25th. And so the ordinance task force will be working on that uh, at our August meeting uh, to try and firm that up along with uh, our consultant, David Sweet. Uh, and that gives us some flexibility to uh, make sure that we're, we have the I's dotted and T's crossed in the application for to meet the deadline. Um, I want to just keep going. <laughs> I guess. Um, I know that uh, Greg Edelman is in attendance, and I see that uh, it's the next agenda item. I'll introduce it, and then I'm going to let Greg uh, run with the ball there. Uh, basically, the Municipal Authority has been working with Metropolitan Development Group on the Hillendale Wastewater Treatment Plant, which is to be dedicated to the Municipal Authority. Uh, during a survey, it was determined that some of the uh, intake equipment for the treatment plant were located off the, the uh, proposed parcel that is to be dedicated to the Township Municipal Authority. So we worked, uh, Pannoni worked along with Al Hal to um, revise the property line so that all the equipment uh, and a fence, the security fence that's to be installed uh, will be all located within the proposed parcel that the municipal authority uh, will <clears throat> have dedication for. Uh, uh, this happened in uh, uh, quite a quick time frame. Uh, the plans were submitted to the township office on June 29th. Uh, I wrote a letter to the county planning commission, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, on June 29th and submitted the plans, the application, the Act 247 review, all the supporting documents uh, to the County Planning Commission for review. And uh, we got back in record time. And I thank Wes mm -hmm. Brano, who is one of the Planning Commission uh, reviewers for his uh, quick review and uh, response to uh, my request. Uh, they have, they had no, um, no comments about moving this forward. Essentially what it is is a lot line change. They said to move the, uh, some of the lot lines to positions where the equipment that's part of this, the treatment plant cycle are within the parcel instead of located in open space for the development. And I see Greg yep. is yes. on there, so. Welcome, Greg. Good evening. Thank you very much for having me this evening. And Scott, thanks for the summary. Um, I think you accurately summarized the, the need for the lot line change plan. It's really a cleanup item. Um, and we appreciate the township in moving this forward. Uh, this is necessary in order for the authority to take dedication of the treatment plant. Um, there really were no issues in terms of the overall plan itself. The issues really were in inconsistencies between what was approved um, on the final record plan versus what was approved as part of the permit and then what was constructed. So this lot line change plan uh, resolves all of those inconsistencies um, so that the fee simple lot that will be dedicated to the authority will contain all of the improvements uh, plus some additional ground. Uh, so that they can have access to the rear of the plant. And in a nutshell, that's it. There's nothing more to the application that's pending before you this evening. We just request your consideration and approval of it so that we can move forward with the dedication process. And the one thing that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, 
that we did, and I spoke to Chairman Rawlings from the Planning Commission uh, about this because it was a simple lot line change. Typically, the process is it goes to the Planning Commission. Uh, the Planning Commission would typically, in something like this, recommend a preliminary and final plan approval in one, uh, one evening, two motions, but uh, do it in all in one evening. And that's what my recommendation is uh, for this, that you grant both preliminary and final plan approval. Uh, I will say that the lot uh, that's to be conveyed went from, I believe it was 0.46 acres to 0.743 acres. So it's a de minimis change in the lot itself, but it was necessary to um, avoid easements and just further problems. Kristen, you have any concerns with that? No, I just note that there are a few waivers noted on the plan just because this is such a minor scale of a, you know, lot line change. A lot of the otherwise applicable requirements wouldn't, wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be necessary. So just that if the board felt um, appropriate to grant preliminary and final, I think that can be done in one motion. But I would just say that your motion should also include the waivers noted on the plan. Jason, any questions? Um, I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the preliminary final land development application for Hill and Dare water, wastewater treatment plant lot line change um, as presented on the drawings with the including I'm sorry including the um, seven waivers as depicted All right so the motion was to grant the preliminary and final with the waivers noted on the plan I'll second all in favor aye, aye. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate everyone's help as well. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you. You as well. Thank you. All right, Luke, you haven't talked for a while. You're up. I don't know how to take that. Um, uh, just uh, for the, the record and those of us uh, keeping score at home, um, how did we leave um, uh, the agenda item V, uh, C? I understood we tabled V, B. Um, but does board, does staff have approval to make the application for the, the Vision Partnership Program grant? So, um, so Jason was, Jason was um, taking more time on B, so you got that, right? Yeah, I, I got that okay. B was tabled. Yep. And I, I uh, the way I understood it was we were, we were, it was important but not necessity tonight, so maybe I misunderstood that. Okay, uh, Scott, did, did you need the board to take action this evening? Not on comprehensive plan update. It was uh, more of an information piece, but the, the two go hand in hand. Uh, the uh, assessment report is the basis for majority of the, the, the comprehensive plan update that we're proposing. So we do need to have some consensus uh, moving forward that uh, the board approves the plan, or the, I should say the report, so that we can uh, now and uh, the September 25th deadline create the application based on most of the information that's contained in the outline that David Sweet published uh, after our June uh, task force meeting, uh, but again, that is based on the Conservancy's Sustainable Community Assessment Report. So there, there's no approval for that. It was more information on where we're moving toward 
uh, as far as that grant application, the uh, proposal for the work scopes. Thank you for the clarification. I was a, a little concerned that our um, audio quality was going to make it difficult to write the minutes for this evening. Um, it, 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 you originally recognized me on the uh, resolution 15 of 2020. Would you like me to address that? Please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, before you this evening is draft resolution 15 of 2020, which directs staff to transfer $470,200.13 from the Saldo Open Space Fund to the General Fund Investment slash Capital Reserve Account. By way of a brief introduction to this project, one recommendation of the 2018 Strategic Assessment and Five-Year Plan uh, authorized by this board in the beginning of 2018 was to fund improvements at the Bondsville Mill Park from the Saldo Open Space Fund instead of the Township's General Fund. Beginning in 2019, we have done so. More recently, Supervisor Winters acquired of the, inquired of the Township's appointed auditors about the prospect of reimbursing the Township's General Fund for expenditures made from the General Fund between 2014 and 2018. The answer he received was yes. Staff then began a review of the 280 individual financial transactions during this period to determine the appropriateness of utilizing the, uh, the encumbered Saldo Open Space Fund for this expenditure. Those transactions, again, totaling just over $470,000, are itemized in Exhibit A to your draft resolution. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have about this, uh, about this research or about the resolution language. Comments you'd like to make? Uh, I'll turn it over to Jason. Kristen? No, I don't have any comments. I reviewed the matter. I, I mean, I didn't look at the numbers necessarily. Um, Luke did the fine digging as far as determining what was appropriate. I revised the resolution slightly. So do I have a motion? Okay. Yeah, I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. Resolution 15 of 2020 of transferring the funds from the open space um, fund back to the general funds in the amount depicted on the attached um, document that Luke provided. $470,213 um, is the total. I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Um, I know we had, um, um, I'm not, sorry, I, I, don't, I don't see it here. I know we had some. Uh, um, participation requests from, from us HOA. Um, yes. So um, at, at this point, we've accumulated two people who have indicated an interest in, in addressing the board. Um, the, the kind of unusual hybrid meeting we're hosting here um, resulted in two of them being off agenda item here. But I wanted to present to the board that two individuals um, um, uh, Chris Waters, who we heard from this early, the earlier, and Joseph DeFrank um, have asked to address the board, and at, it, I would be happy to unmute their, their devices if you are interested in hearing from them. Yeah, so what I'll do is, um, um, since Applecross was, since Apple Cross was um, a, a discussion from, from earlier on, let's, um, I'll, I'll open it up for public comment on agenda items, and, um, and then we'll... Um, We'll go to the Apple Cross issue uh, since Chris is on there. Okay. Well, I've just unmuted Joe's microphone. Well, Did you say you wanted can, him to go can, second? Joe, if you're on, we can. What we'll do is we'll we'll finish the Apple Cross and then we'll hit, we'll head to the, uh, the public comment. Joe, are you available? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I want to thank your staff for um, all that you've done with it for us over the years at Apple Cross. My name is Joe DeFrank. I'm the president of the Homeowners Association. Um, about a month ago, we submitted to the township a um, present state of our stormwater basins. This uh, took many hours of work um, in-house as well as uh, uh, engineering time, so you can only imagine what it took to put that together. Um, we also at that time requested a sit-down meeting with the supervisors. As of yesterday, and with short notice, Brubacher broke ground on one of our basins, uh, which we have many with issues. 
and were advised that they were only working on four um, with no oversight or engineering. So at that point, we felt obligated to bring our own engineer on site which thankfully we did. We ran into some issues yesterday that we resolved. Um, and, and we have a great concern. Uh, we're asking for an expedited sit down to discuss options, recommendations from the township and to clear up some miscommunication that has transa uh, transpired over the recent week. Um, and, and I'm just looking for some help. Well, I guess let's start with the first question, the expedited meeting. I, I have no problem. I can make myself available pretty much any day next week. Um, I, I, I'm going to understand I'm speaking for myself right now, though. Um, and I would have to assume uh, if we were going to get a meeting done, and I do understand time is of the essence for you, so that's that's clearly why I'm throwing this, this out there. Um, I would have to assume we would have to, to, to make it a um, uh, Zoom type meeting for uh, staff and um, I'm assuming we would need at least our solicitor um, um, and I don't, I don't, so I want to speak, I don't know if you need both supervisors there, but again, I'm happy to make my time available to facilitate this meeting if to everybody else's schedules we would uh we would definitely be glad to do the um the zoom meeting uh um with your schedule uh i, I it would be nice to have two supervisors on i think it's that important uh there's a lot of history here with uh apple cross and uh you know i i think when all parties involved it might, it might be very helpful for us and may be helpful for you they, they can't do two supervisors unless it's advertised as a public meeting correct so so if it were going to be two supervisors we would have to advertise it as a special meeting and um that would take a little bit of time to get advertised in the paper um if for sunshine law violations, if if that's the way it, you know it has to be, it would just be a a um, uh, longer drawn out time frame. I would assume, Kristen, is that correct? It only takes it's just twenty four hour notice in the paper. So as long as we're given twenty four hour notice to advertise, that's fine. Let's do let's do this, uh, Kyle. If I'll reach out to you tomorrow. If we can kind of discuss it offline and come up with a suggestion on which way to handle it, I, I don't know that, you know, we're looking for some direction and some help. Um, we're in a crossroads right now and time is not on our side. So um, why don't we do that? Okay. And then maybe, maybe, um, I don't, Kristen, I don't know what your schedule is, but perhaps we can schedule a, a, a conference call. Um, Absolutely. Uh, I'm available. Okay, so what, what fits your schedule? Uh, for me, it would be better um, either at lunchtime or, or late afternoon. Um, and I say late, meaning like maybe 3 o'clock. Um, for me personally, um, if, if, if either of those times works for, for you guys, I'm available. Otherwise, um, I'm, I'm, I'm wide open on Monday um, anytime. How about Monday at 3 o'clock, Kristen? Would that work for you too? It does. Okay, well, why don't we do that, and I'll confirm it uh, with our vice president, Dr. and I, and um, I'll get back to you tomorrow if, is that, if that's okay. Perfect, and you, you feel free to reach out to me, and I can then relay to Kristen. Once again, I want to thank you, Mr. Chairman, and your uh, staff. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if, if I could just chime in. Uh, Kristen, can I get – It does Act 15 of 2020 um, relieve some of the advertising burden on us? Can we just post it on our website? You're supposed to ha not really. I mean, well, the, to do that, you have to have you have to know to put it on the website five days prior to the meeting. So they're not. I don't think they're having. They're planning. I think we can accomplish it within 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 that phone call. So I'm not sure it needs to be a public meeting. I'm not sure it's. I think it's legal issues that we can vet out. I've had two conversations with the HOA's council, and we I think we've made some progress. So. Either way, I, I'm fine with supporting um, our local press with an ad in the paper. I just thought that uh, we might be able to save some money. I think the board of directors would prefer that we do it this way. 
Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so now what we'll do is we'll go to the public comment for agenda items, knowing that we have one, uh, I believe, with Ms. Waters that was uh, hybrid. Uh, yeah. Uh, Chris, can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak again. I wanted to circle back on my point about the conflict of interest and um, the fairness to the candidates that spoke tonight that all seem to have wonderful credentials and a great line of history of service to that community. I know several of them very well and um, have experienced their leadership throughout the years. And so Mr. Sherbeck, states that he has no conflict under the law. I would like to hear the solicitor's opinion on if there's a conflict of interest that exists. Well, I, I don't typically like to give legal advice at a public meeting. The, I need to understand specifically the facts. If, if Kyle and Jason today, sitting as the current board members, choose Mr. Sherbach, there's no conflict. There's no conflict for an appointed official of the township to also serve in the capacity as a board supervisor. If the scenario is that Jason and, and Kyle do not agree within the 30 day time frame that basically starts tonight, and therefore then the vacancy board needs to then, under the law, they would have an additional 15 days to choose a supervisor. It really depends upon how, who makes the motion, who makes the second. Um, the State Ethics Act does define what is a conflict of interest. The State Ethics Act has its specific section that deals with a scenario where there would be a tie vote and where a person who would have a conflict of interest would have to break a tie on a three-person three board. So we have look, I have looked at the issue, but I can't really give the advice until I understand exactly what scenario we're talking about. Okay, thank you very much for your input. That's all I have. Thank you very much. I have no other parties interested in addressing the board. As far as I know, yes. It's we as the bank would yes. I haven't gotten a response. No so, yeah, the township obviously has the right in its sense to, to step in. Um, we are, uh, that being said, shorthanded right now on, on, on that side of the department. Um, but we put it on record that clearly if this goes on another week and we have no, no, um, no response from the bank, then I think it would warrant us to take care of it for them. Um, okay, uh, I would like to just thank everybody for coming out tonight. I would like to thank everybody in the audience tonight. I would like to thank all the participants who were part of this, this, this supervisor uh, application process. Um, I, I personally would like some time to digest. We, I'll be honest with you, there is phenomenal candidates here. And um, um, I guess the next question is, Kristen, um, what is the, what is the um, uh, rule of law, so to speak, for the supervisor to discuss this, um, these applications? Is, um, uh, is that sunshine law a violation if the two of us discuss this in a, uh, an executive session? How does that, how does that work? Yes. The the Sunshine Law does not allow you to deliberate on this particular matter. You'd have to come back at a public meeting to have that deliberation. Okay, so that's... Well, wouldn't that be personnel? What's that? No, um, a board supervisor position is specifically not personnel under the Sunshine Law. Yep, and, I, and that's why I ask. I, I clearly, you're not here, and I don't want to discuss it and, unless it is at a public meeting, and that's why we pay you the big money. So thank you. I appreciate the answer to that. Um, um, we had no other public comments on agenda items. I don't believe we have any other notice notices. <coughs> Bruce, yes. Yes. So, so the there there is a the uh, the, the, uh, the Beaver Beaver Creek Dam. Uh, I had that in my last month, Bruce, and it's also a reminder in the report that um, I had tonight, which didn't read, 
it's on uh, it's on our website uh, it can publicize uh, I don't know what more we could do I did I know that uh, Ann Bowers spoke to Joe DeFrank and I would imagine that the folks in Apple Talk, uh, would be notified through their email chain so uh, we've done all we can to advertise that I know the, the Water Resources Authority has done the same thing. So it's, it's, I don't want to call it a meeting. It's more of an open house, although it will be controlled. Uh, they're going to have uh, three storyboards. They're all the same thing. That's what they discussed with me. Set up around the roof so that everybody can be social distance. And um, they'll have folks there, whether it's uh, Jan Bowers, Craig Thomas, uh, their engineer from Gannett Fleming, other folks from the Water Resources Authority. Uh, they'll, they'll be here stationed at each of the three stations to answer questions. Yeah, and, and actually a resident from Apple Cross reached out to me with multiple concerns, one of which was um, the age demographic of people coming into the building, um, how are they going to be protected in masks and things of that nature, meaning here at the township building, I reached out to Scott uh, uh, last week um, with that. Uh, the uh, second was the issue with the fish. <laughs> Where are the fish going to go? So I know Scott was asking, uh, and I don't know if you have an answer to that question yet, but um, the, the, the will need to be drained. And with that, there will be uh, sustainable life in that. In that uh, uh, what, what, what did you find? That I, I haven't found out anything yet. I sent, I believe I sent an email to Craig Thomas, maybe on vacation, I don't know. That he'd be the one to answer that because he's he's the the person from the Water Resources Authority that um, is over for the authority. So that would be, I would have to be honest with you. One of my biggest concerns as well is where where are all these uh, you know fish going to go and from? Yeah, and I would hope that you know obviously. It will, it will be yeah, and I, um, that, I mean, you really can't see very, I mean, from a couple properties, that's a good thing, but, um, but yeah, I, unfortunately, we, we don't have a control over that, but, um, okay, any other questions in the audience, nothing else? <laughs> the longer we keep talking, they're going to okay. keep uh, um, uh, 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 Dr. Nye has indicated an interest in addressing the board. Okay, go ahead. Joe Edwards. I'm sorry? Joe Edwards. Uh, is Joe indicated as well? Yeah. Uh, well Joe can come in at any time. He, 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 he. Joe. Luke? Yeah, hey, you're live. Uh, yeah, my IT department took off tonight, so I'm doing this on my own. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, Kyle, I just wanted to chime in. I didn't. I, I guess I didn't realize in the beginning that our report, uh, I kind of waived it by saying I didn't have anything to add. But if I could just talk to the supervisor candidates a moment and just implore them that now they put in their application to be a supervisor, to contact the fire chief, Vince Domingo, to contact myself, find a little bit more about what was on at East Brain and Wine Fire Company was robust with 40 volunteers. Mr. Buxalas, when he ran his election last time, took a point to come down and find out what exactly was going on with the fire department and the fire service. And we are an integral part of the community that's based on volunteerism. And each one of the candidates tonight, everyone seemed pretty good. I know most of them. I don't know all of them. But I encourage them to reach out to us so they also know what kind of base they're dealing with, with emergency services, uh, as well as the police department and us. And that's all I wanted to add. I said, we're open to any time to giving them a tour and letting them see what the fire company uh, needs and uh, what we provide. Thank you. 
opportunity. Great. I think that's very important. And Chief Koski just offered he'll come in on Saturday and Sunday to do the same. So that's great. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Uh, so our last uh, our last one for the night, because we, we do each other down at some point, we'll go ahead and turn it into the night, and then I will close uh, public comment uh, on agenda items. Hi, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. I, I got turned off for a second there. Um, I Just back to the dam issue. Does the township have a position on the uh, trail, uh, the importance of keeping the trail open during the dam project? Has that been discussed at all with CCWRA? It has not. Okay. And is there a position on that side in regards to these kinds of things? I, you know, I don't know if there's been a history of in the past with trail closures due to construction or, and you know. That's something that, uh, that you, Bonnie, should ask uh, next week at the presentation. Okay. So we ha we have been asking, and it's we've not really gotten answers. That's why I was asking whether there was, um, because it is a public trail, whether there was um, it, any intervention on your part in that regard um, as the township. So so just it's 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 uh, Supervisor Scribner. I I apologize. It's okay. it's choppy. But uh, the question was uh, during the during the draining. Uh, of, of the Beaver Creek Dam, will there be a closed walking trail uh, or will, it, will the trail be continue, continue to be opening? Was that the question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, I would assume that's a fairly uh, easy email that, that perhaps uh, staff could send out either tomorrow or Monday uh, in anticipation of, of next week's meeting. And uh, I'm sure we could have that answered for you by, by, uh, by somebody. Bonnie, the only thing I can think of would be uh, construction traffic uh, across that one section of the trail. Uh, and uh, I know there was some discussion that the, I think they were going to uh, put heavy metal plate across the trail uh, okay. to avoid damage, but there was no discussion that I recall about closure of the trail. Okay. Uh, I mean, obviously, we were hoping that the least amount of closure would be possible because it's a heavily loose trail at this point. So, by a lot of members of the community. So, okay. All righty. So, we'll try to see if we can get more answers next week. We have not been able to get many answers to really any question, many questions about this uh, project. So, okay. Um, we'll see how what next week brings. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then I'm going to have the meeting on Monday with you guys anyway and Kristen. So I, I would assume we should be able to get you an answer by Monday afternoon when we have that meeting. Perhaps we can address it then. Okay. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you very much. Hey, many thanks, guys. Um, Supervisor Winters had something to, to note, and I, I didn't know. Basically, I got a phone call from a resident who was questioning um, – whether the fields at the park are closed to the public. Um, sure. The, the only uh, can I finish though? So um, he understood that the equipment was closed due to you know, due to the lack of cleaning that the township can offer. If I wanted to know about the use of the fields, why are they why the are they use off of limits? The fields to groups has been closed. We've been having problems with other. Uh, soccer clubs, uh, rugby clubs, uh, using the fields with no permission. And I've addressed that to all of the clubs that have been identified by Mike Mize from our Park and Rec Board. And but what about from our residents? I mean, that's, you if, know, we collect fees from Apple Cross. If it's a, a, you know, a family that wants to kick a ball around, that's one thing. But today we had a group. Uh, that was in, uh, they were in uniforms, and we got the complaint from the, uh, to the township office 
and one of our officers went and told these folks that the, the, the fields are closed and it was a group operation. It wasn't a, a family wanting to go out there. there as far as I know, there were approximately 15, 15 kids that were there, uh, all in uniform. Um, what, someone complained about, someone complained about the township? How they complain and, the, the, and the fields have been posted closed for at least the last three weeks. These groups continue to come in. They remove the field close signs and they're either practicing or scrimmaging or whatever they're doing. And according to our park rules and regulations, there are only certain groups who are permitted to use the parks. And these, these outside groups from Chester Springs, uh, Downingtown Rugby, uh, who did respond to me and said that they were not using our fields, that they were not, uh, they had no, no practices scheduled they basically closed things down due to COVID-19. But I haven't gotten a response from some of the other soccer clubs. And, and, and if I may chime in, I think missing from this conversation is um, a, a little background. The, um, the fields are all maintained um, by the 501c3 East Brandywine Youth Athletics. And that's done with their fundraising and with their parent participation for those those young athletes, um, what what happens is we develop a free rider problem, because it, it isn't really accurate to say that the that the tax dollars are being used to maintain those playing services. Um, East Brandywine Youth Athletics dollars are what's being used to maintain those playing services, and and that's why they have the first of right refusal on the use of those fields. So when we see league play out there that's causing wear and tear, that's um, that that's that's. You know, that's not um, our mowers that go out and fix it. That's um, the, 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 the nonprofit that, that runs our, our, our youth programs. But do we mow the field? Do taxpayers? I mean, because we, for example, you have Apple Cross who does not have, a, they have lack of a, a term. They don't have any open space. Um, you know, we collected a fee for those residents to be able to go to a park to be able to, you know, for the NPC to be able to ha be outdoors and recreation. And, um, you know, I don't think that we should be allowing one um, organization to control the use of the fields for residents in general. I think maybe we need to take another look at that then. Well, well you know, it, it, I have worked for a number of municipalities and I can say that this arrangement is, is frankly, it's not typical. Um, generally, a municipality would have a parks and recreation department that, that does its own programming out there. And then you would be able to divide the cost of the maintenance of those fields um, by the hours of use and come up with a fair fee for additional leagues, um, all, albeit that you would give priority to your in-house leagues mm -hmm. on, on practices and the like. Um, that's not what happens here. That, that's, there's, a, there's a, like I said, a nonprofit organization that does its own fundraising to maintain those surfaces. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm highly sympathetic to a family that's cooped up you know, they're, 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 uh, can't leave the house. We've got the COVID pandemic. They want to go around and kick a ball around. That's fine. I'm less sympathetic to a league that has no skin in the game and the maintenance of those fields, taking advantage of this time to put wear and tear on those fields. I just want to, I was taken back when he told me the park closed because I, with the social distancing and the encouragement of being outdoors, I, I found that hard to believe. I thought maybe the equipment was you know, off limits, but not the actual right. grass areas. EBYA's right of first refusal is is a trade. They, they maintain, and that's why they get that. It's not favoritism. Can I comment? Please. We need some better clarification on what the township wants with this, because um, Scott, when you officer went out there today, it was families from the township and the kids were wearing their team jerseys and the parents were kicking a ball around with their kids. So I understand you don't want the teams on there, but my understanding was the township didn't want anybody on there. So okay. if we're going to allow families, I just need to know that so I can tell the officers. 
that wasn't correct. It was my understanding that it was team play. That's what was related to me, and I asked Duran, who got the call, to ask the police to go out there based on that information. Yeah, I just... It, are you okay with families from the township being on the fields kicking a ball around? That's what I... That's all I really need to know because that's what that was. Social distancing, that's fine. Okay. We're trying to stop these teams that are coming and using our fields with, as Luke said, no skin in the game. They're, they're using the fields, possibly damaging the fields, and we don't maintain them, uh, as Luke said, other than mowing. He okay. does uh, a lot of, they spend a lot of money on those fields. So families are fine as long as it's not some huge group or somebody said, well, I'm a resident of the township and I should be able to bring these kids in here to practice. No, if it's a family event, they're using the fields at their risk. They need to understand that. And we posted signs around the park at, on the porta potties, on the pavilions, etc. to make that well known. We can't uh, sanitize those facilities because we don't know who's using them. We don't know how many people are using them. We put it, uh, made it known that the fields should be closed to all but those that the township give permission to. Residents are fine. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'm just talking about like a neighborhood who's so much to hope that. That's what I want to make sure. I just that's all. So. I agree. No, I understand. Uh, yes. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I will make a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye.